In today's video, we answer the question, would you rather overnight in a stagecoach or a traveling salesman, snake oil pusher wagon thing with a chimney? By the way, that has a view of the buffalo. Or maybe you want to stay in a log cabin. Yes, but wait, there's one more. Or maybe you want to stay in a silo. Is that cool? Today, I introduce you to one of the coolest KOAs I've been to yet, and I've been to many. Stay tuned to the very end because I'm going to make a recommendation on should you stay here or not. Let's roll. Thanks for tuning in today. Really appreciate that. My name is Scott. I'm your host. Welcome to Go Small, Live Large a YouTube channel dedicated to the Class B RV lifestyle. That would be in a van. Today I wanted to show you one of the coolest KOA campgrounds I've come across yet. And stay at the end, I'm gonna make a recommendation should you stay here or not. This uh, campground really checks a lot of the nice things I like about RV parks. Let's get into it. So this is the shower house building here in the RV park. Uh, there are two facilities just like this. This one's nearest my van. Let me give you a hot tip on where to shower in this one and where not to. And let me show you the laundry room. Laundry, open 24 hours, that's cool. Reasonably priced, that's cool. So three sets, washer dryer, washer dryer, washer dryer, plus a table to fold. This is nice, clean. Uh, they did dry and wash very effectively from the laundry that I did. Let me show you the restroom. As is often the case these days, these are unisex um, restrooms, meaning anybody can use them, which is pretty cool. Um, I was using this one the first couple days. Let me show you inside, and I'll give you a hot tip, literally. So fairly standard, toilet sink, um, hand dryer. This is kind of nice. They're all uh, handicap equipped, which is cool. So you have two shower heads, if you wish. Um, and uh, this was a pretty good shower experience with the exception of it took literally, and I am not kidding, 12 to 15 minutes for the hot water to arrive at this shower head, even with both showers going. Why is that? Well, that's because this shower stall is second to last at the end of the row where, yes, the endless hot water is generated right here. So my recommendation is to use this first one so your hot water arrives in probably five minutes, not the literally 12 minutes it took to get down there. That would be my advice, is to use that one closest to the hot water. Let me show you the campsite. Welcome to my campsite. A campsite that has a gravel floor, a gravel landing pad, a gravel parking pad. No, these are shells. Yes, gazillions of little shells make up the parking pad. Pretty cool. There's a few things I really like about this RV park, and that is the amazing amount of space in between the parking pads. So typically what would happen is the RV park would mow these trees down and put another RV right here, literally, right next to this one in between us two. This one has at least, I'm going to guess, 30 feet between each one, which is really, really unusual and very, very lovely, even though it's fairly full. And even the big rigs over here have a big amount of space between all the rigs, which is so unusual and so pleasant. Got a fire ring, came equipped with a picnic table. And then on this side is the utilities. And this is how I like to set it up here, have my water on standby. I'll fill my tanks tonight because I'm leaving tomorrow. And then my uh, power core goes in here. I leave that, leave that plugged in. It's been uh, cooled off a little bit, so I've opened up the windows for not having to use the air conditioner. And then I often just leave my bike um, on the picnic table here so that it's ready to go to moment's nose for a quick ride in between calls or something like that. Um, I just chain it to the uh, picnic table at night. I haven't bothered with the fire ring. And the other thing that's really amazing about this site is all of the trees. 
So look at all the shade trees, which make a giant difference in keeping the rig cool and bringing birds, tons of wild birds to this area. So here's my recommendation on what spot I would choose if I was to come back and make a reservation in advance. That one right there, let me show you. So my recommendation is to stay in this spot right here, spot number two or spot number one. These are both pull-throughs. They have water and electric. They do not have sewer. Sewer dump stations right here. But what makes these extra special is that when you open the patio door slider, your view is of the farm. As you can see this one here and this one over here is of the farm field, not another RV. And this one is particularly sweet because the front facing view is again the farm and grass not the back end of an RV. You see that there? So if you're in the uh, Bradenton, Florida area, I would make a reservation of the KOA and recommend you stay at one of those two sites. One of the great things about RV parks is there's a nice collection of RVs, whether they're new, vintage like this bad boy. It's an Avion, never even heard of them before. Um, lots of fifth wheels and towables. There was a few vans here earlier, uh, now I'm the only van. I saw a Coachman Nova. That was cool. They're no longer here. I was hoping to catch them today. A quick clarification. This front row are all pull-throughs, meaning you pull the rig through, you never back in. Uh, my site is actually a back-in, um, which those work out pretty good in most cases. Um, I like this position here because, again, the sun, the strong sun is not in the cab. The morning sun is, but that is doable. Um, AC can keep up with that um, and then in the evening I can turn the AC off and you get to see a sunset from your rear view which is amazing. Often I work outside um, if the temperatures are about right. Um, I use my outdoor speakers on the side of my van which is great. Just a lovely lovely place to call home. Good news on the Wi-Fi it actually works here. Not super fast but that is doable for zoom calls and even streaming some movies, yes. So thank you, KOA. Nice job on the Wi-Fi. This is the really cool lake that people are fishing off of. Not sure if they've caught anything yet. This is kind of the community grill area. And then this is the obviously the volleyball area. They have a little sand pit for kids to play in. Really a lovely, lovely place. Welcome to the town of Waterbury. Let me show you around. This old boy is in for a long stay in the federal prison. On Saturdays, they run the train, which is really cool. It takes you around the property here, and it I missed it on Saturday, but look at this cute little caboose up here. Caboose. It's an engine. Hello. I live in a van. What do I know? Let me introduce you to Margaret. Margaret is a swamp buggy. For a small fee on Saturdays, you can go for a ride in the fields on this contraption. And you can probably imagine the damage that can be done with a pumpkin cannon.
Another great thing for kids is they have a petting zoo associated with the ice cream barn. The petting zoo is pretty elaborate. Let me show you a few of these. So what they have is a number of uh, pens here and then some cages here where you don't really get a touch, but you can see, in this case, we got peacocks right in front of us. These are the chickens. And then over here, we got goats and horses and donkeys. So one of the great things about a place like this is you get to see an actual farm growing food, in this case, vegetables. Uh, it's always amazing to me how much effort it takes to get that zucchini squash plucked out of the grocery store and how kind of cheap it is when there's so much involved. What's also great about this place is it's a U-Pick. If you're into the U-Pick style of getting fresh produce, I think you'll really like this place. Spectacular sunset coming up. You might be wondering, where is this in Florida? Well, this is Bradenton. This is Sarasota, which is a little bit south of St. Petersburg and Tampa area. But to give you some reference points, let's do Sarasota from where we are. And it's about a 45 minute drive, you can see, from where we are. A couple of different routes. Um, I recommend taking the back road. It was really pretty, really pleasant. See a lot of agriculture and a different side of Florida than most people think of. And how much is the campground, you might be asking? Let's show you that. So I like to use the KOA app. So on this, we'll see how much rates are going for right now. Pretty reasonable. Wide, wide variety, so this is for a van. Let's just say we're gonna check in uh, next week for a few days. So midweek, place was filled with kids uh, which is cool. I love the energy that kids bring to a campground. can be a little noisy. So they got four sites available. Uh, this is the back end. This is the kind that I'm at. So averaging about $50 a night. Again, no sewer. Do have water and electric. And this is the pull through for the big rigs, 50 amp, 30 amp, 20 amp, which are these ones out here. And these are $63 a night ish on the average. And they got some really deluxe patios. And I've stayed at these before at a KOA in Arlington, Texas, and they are really nice if you want to be outside and just kind of hang out. It's like having your own park. And these are going for $85 a night, and those are kind of meant for the big boys. So I hope you enjoyed that tour of the uh, Huns Hunsader Farms, Bradenton, Florida KOA. Um, would I recommend you stay here? I absolutely would. This has been one of my fun, uh, most fun KOA campgrounds and RV park experiences yet. I just like it because it's so cool. Wi-Fi, they got it. Bathhouses, they got it. Fun things to do, they got that in spades. A different kind of feel, for sure, and the size of these RV uh, campsite lots is magnificent under these fantastic trees. And in the morning when it's quiet, um, you can see the mist coming up over the, um, the bugs are on me, <laughs> uh, over the, um, the fields. It's absolutely spectacular, and the bird wildlife is over the top incredible. Um, so again, thank you for watching. Comment below. Would you want to stay here? Where are you watching from? Super curious about that. A lot of international viewers on here at Go Small Live Large. Check out my website. We've got some events coming up. You'll want to stay tuned for those and join us in person if you can. And join us every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Central, live Q&A on our What's Up Wednesday program. we got guest speakers coming up and a whole bunch of cool content that you don't want to miss. So once again, we say thank you and we'll see you soon. Journey up. Life is a winding road, no telling where it goes. You want to see inside? Yeah, look how cool this is. Bunk beds, got a little fridge, microwave, little sofa bed thing, table. Look how nice this is on, on, in the daylight. So cool. What a creative idea. Falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. 
even if the sky is falling down. Jumping from cliffs so high. So van versus stagecoach. Where would you want to stay? I'm not trading in my van Lily for a stagecoach anytime soon. But just for the sense of adventure, wouldn't it be cool to stay the night in a stagecoach with your van parked outside? I don't know. I gotta figure out how much they cost because I don't I can't see that on the website right away. Uh, but I'll find out. Yep, yeah, comment below to get that information. Where would you want to stay? The van or the stagecoach? Pretty cool, right? Thanks for watching.